You know, in normal times, according to the World Health Organization, nearly 2 million people die because no one was around to give them first aid. Add in some kind of SHTF or disaster, and that number is probably going to go up a whole lot higher. Here's the question for you guys who are new preppers. Are you ready to save a life, either your own or somebody else's? Today, I'm going to show you some interesting tools that might help you do that. Hey everybody, welcome back and happy Sunday. If you're watching this on a Sunday, today happens to be a Sunday. Having my morning coffee and going over some new stuff that I picked up from Rhino Rescue. These are some first aid, individual first aid trauma kits, okay? One is a more advanced one and one is a basic everyday kind of a everyday carry all purpose kit. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what's inside. Uh, the first one we're gonna talk about is the IFAC trauma kit, this big one here in the multicam. And I'm going to show you all that comes inside of it. I do want to give you a little information on Rhino Rescue. These are all made in the USA, okay? And they're created after sourcing community feedback featuring improvised and additional equipment for a more complete first aid kit and experience. Now, one of the things I'm going to tell you is these devices, these bags, do have some devices in them that you probably want to get some training with. I'm not going to tell you folks to run out and use a nasal pharyngeal airway if you've never done it before, or a decompression needle or a chest seal. This is stuff you're going to need to learn on your own, and that's why it's important if you are a new prepper to take some basic first aid classes and to pick up a couple of books. I always recommend uh, Where There Is No Doctor and also Where There Is No Dentist. These are handy books that will give you information on how to save lives in a potentially life-threatening situation. Now, of course, none of us go into a survival situation thinking, I can't wait till I get, you know, a bleeding artery or an injury or something severe happening to us. But the fact of the matter is, is it might happen and it might not even be from something as serious as combat. I mean, you can trip and fall and cut yourself pretty bad. I know I've sliced my leg open with a, with a, a shovel, you know, in, in a garbage pail. I didn't know it was there when I slipped and fell and the shovel hit me in the leg. Thankfully, it wasn't a very deep cut, but still, something like that in the wrong place at the wrong time could become a very serious and severe injury. So let's start off with the first kit here. and This is the Outdoor IFAC. This is a very full IFAC trauma kit. It's a premium version of their popular IFAC kit. This one has massive hemorrhage and circulatory care. It contains one of the most user-friendly, compact, popular survival first aid supplies out there. All right, you have the Israeli bandage, you have compressed gauze, a tourniquet, and I know, folks, I know, I know there's people out there already going, oh, it's not as good as a cat tourniquet. They have tested these tourniquets. Again, if you don't feel comfortable with it, by all means, take that one out and put a cat tourniquet in there. I'm not telling you what to do as far as that. I'm just saying I did some research on their tourniquets, and I know people love the cat tourniquet, and I have several, don't get me wrong, but this is what this kit comes with. So we're going to show you what's inside. Another neat feature of this is it has a bone fracture treatment kit in it. It's got a 36-inch splint roll that will help keep bones in position, triangular bandage, an elastic bandage to wrap around and secure the limb from moving around, and with the splint roll, the triangular bandage, and elastic bandage, you should be able to keep any broken limb stabilized so as not to hurt it any worse. So, first thing I'm going to show you here quickly, they do come with these cards. I don't really know how we'd be using these cards in a civilian type situation, but still, you know, they're handy to, handy to know. Um, I do notice here that we have mechanism of injury, artillery, <laughs> RPG, grenade. I don't think we're going to need to worry about that just yet. But they do have a very, very good manual. Um, now, again, if you have no training, don't rely on just the manual. But if you do have training, you know, it definitely will give you some interesting information. How to use the vented chest seal, how to use a tourniquet, emergency bandage, the splint application, okay? That's very, very handy to know. And that, you know, you could probably get a good look at that and see. That's, you know, fairly simple to use, okay? So they do have a very, very good uh, basic information on your stuff to do there. And they also have all the emergency numbers for all the countries around the world. So let's open up the big kit here and let's take a look at it and see what's inside. All right, so quickly, now I have not set this up for my own personal use. I am taking it and opening it up right away. Quickly, I'm gonna show you what's inside. Okay, we start off with the Israeli bandage here. Okay, okay, and you've got some compressed gauze on this side, two of them. You've got some wound compress, sterile iPad, um, interestingly enough, when I took my CERT class, 
Um, one of the things they focused on was eye injuries. They're very common in earthquakes and that type of scenario. So this combined with an eye shield to prevent any further injury to the eye are very important. And I actually got stuck with one of the people claiming to have something stuck in their eye. You know, of course, they, they didn't have any kind of props or anything. They just held their hand over their eye. So my job was to wrap up their face so that it didn't, you know, impede anymore. Or they didn't try to pull it out. Um, in a situation like that, of course, you wouldn't be using this stuff. You wouldn't be putting anything over there. But this is a way to keep eye injury safe. Okay, you do have some BZK antiseptic swabs, some anti-sting relief, burn gel. I'm probably going to put a bigger thing of burn gel in there. You do have a CPR face shield. These are less and less common as more and more civilian CPR classes are recommending hands-only CPR and to skip the breaths. However, if you are familiar and know how to use it, this is a way to keep yourself from being on top of somebody's mouth. Okay, you do have a tongue depressor. You do have an elastic crepe bandage. These are very handy for wrapping stuff up. You do have two things of gloves. Um, what I'm going to do for my own personal use, and this is what I suggest you do, is open up one of these. Try them out. Do they fit? Do they feel good? Generally, these are for protecting you from somebody else's bloodborne pathogens. They're not for protecting the person because you're not going to be doing surgery on them. You're just patching them up so you can get them to a hospital. So open one up, see if they fit your hands. If they don't, if they're uncomfortable, if you're allergic to any kind of latex, by all means, put your own gloves in. Okay, next up is the tourniquet. I do recommend you open this up. Do not leave it in the plastic. The last thing you want to be doing while somebody is hemorrhaging out is, hold on, let me open this up. So I'm actually going to open it up right now and take a quick look at it. Okay. So it does see, appear to be very well made. Okay. There you go. Right there. And this is your time. Remember when you put a tourniquet on to always write the time on there because your doctors or EMTs are going to be real thankful when you do that so they know how long the limb has been cut off from any kind of um, blood flow. So it does seem to be okay. Uh, it does seem to be well made. There isn't anything that feels cheap on this at all. Okay. So again, if you don't feel comfortable with it, by all means, go out and get yourself a cat tourniquet and put it in there. Um, my personal experience, I love the cat tourniquets and they do a very good job. So I may replace it, I may not. But make sure you keep it open, whatever you do. Make sure that's open. You don't want to be fumbling around with it. Make sure you're familiar with it. I would suggest taking a class on how to use it, maybe a basic first aid class. Heck, if you have a friend that's an EMT, even ask them and have them demo it to you. It's going to hurt when you put that on. And quite frankly, you want it to. You want it to cut off blood flow to whatever artery is bleeding out. So it is going to hurt the patient while you're putting that on. Let them know that. Let them understand you're not trying to hurt them. But definitely learn how to use one before you mess it up and whatever you do if somebody's caught in the neck don't put it around their neck <laughs> you're gonna have emt shears here again i would recommend opening these up these appear to be very nice looking shears i don't know how they feel when i touch them and open them up but yeah they seem to be pretty good i do like the serrated edges on that because it does cut through clothing easier than say a plain pair of shears and these are kind of neat because they will clip on your gear so if you want to leave these outside, clip it on the side, that's handy too. I would keep these probably most accessible with that. This and this need to be where you can grab it right away, okay? So there you go. We do have some absorbent pads here. Chest seal, a vented chest seal, two of them, okay? So definitely, again, this is something you want to learn how to use, okay? What this will do, okay, if somebody has a chest wound and their lungs are punctured, this will allow them to breathe somewhat normally and allow them to vent in and out without it just going out and having no air so it kind of gives them back a little bit of a respiratory system you do have an emergency blanket okay burn dressing okay triangular bandage wound plasters and bandages very handy and of course a nasal pharyngeal airway let me see what size this is 28 rf so this is kind of a i would say a medium uh, again, this is something you want to learn how to use. This is to allow a breathing airway through the nose down into your lungs. So you definitely want to know how to use something like this. You don't want to um, you don't want to use this without some training. Okay. Now there are little treatment Q-tips here. I believe these have. Let's see what's in them. I forget again. I think it's uh, the same as the BZK 
you know, so you can treat wounds with it. And of course, a Sharpie, very, very important to write the time that you put that tourniquet on. Make sure you test it, make sure it works, replace it every few years. That's a good way to keep everything up to par. All right, let's put all this back in that kit and we're gonna talk about the smaller kit and then I'll give you prices on both All right, next up we got the Rhino Outdoor IFAC all-purpose kit. It is waterproof, breathable fabric. Very wear resistant, about 21 ounces total on it. Let's open this up and see what's inside. All right, one of the neat features about this is you do have room for extra stuff. If you feel what's in here isn't enough. Um, I always tell people, pack a first aid kit that's possibly life-saving, but make sure you remember your Tylenol. You know, little things like that that you want to remember. Um, if you take any kind of prescription medication, good place to put it. Make sure you rotate it out. But the neat part about this is, is this pet section comes right out. So if you have potentially life-saving stuff in here, you can lay this right out in front of you and put it right here and you can see everything. All right. So if I have some bleed stop stuff in my tourniquet or whatever, I got it all right here ready for me to see. So let's go over what's inside here. Again, you have the same tourniquet. You do have your combat tape. Basically, it's duct tape um, that is, believe it or not, very handy for closing wounds, smaller ones. You do have your Israeli bandage, your, this is the gauze again, okay, the tourniquet there, of course. Now, let's pull this out of the way and take a look at the back. Now, this is a smaller kit. There is less stuff in here, but it is definitely a very complete kit. Again, you have your gloves. Now, I'd probably take the gloves and put them on there because I want those gloves on my hand before I start messing around with the blood. You have compressed gauze, again, your emergency blanket, one single chest seal, okay? And these are actually pretty simple to use, but I still would, I still would suggest you get training and uh, make sure that you know what you're doing with these before you do it. Nasal pharyngeal airway, again, and of course, EMT shears, which we will open up right now. We'll probably open up the tourniquet too after the video, but I just wanna show you the same shears, same everything, same serrated edge. So. Definitely a little less stuff in there, but this is definitely handy for severe injuries. So that's the smaller version of it. And again, I may move some things around in here. I may add some stuff to this if I ever end up deciding I'm using it. Uh, again, a lot of times I'll sell gear off to friends and stuff who don't have it, sell it off a little bit cheaper so that they can get stocked up too. So it kind of helps everybody out a little bit. So if I plan on keeping this one, I will be modifying it to my own uses. I'll probably definitely keep the big one though because I like that. Now, one of the neat things about, I believe, not this one, but the other one, they do have very nice Molly attachments on the back, is this has a pull lace strap on the back of it. So in an emergency, if this is on me and I'm the injured party, somebody can come over, pull that off, and just tear this back strap right off. You get it out of there. Tear it right off, and it's a lot easier when it's on somebody, and take the bag with them, okay? So that's very handy too. If it's on your person and you are, let's say, incapacitated, unconscious, whatever, it can come off very, very quickly. So that's the smaller kit. This does have really nice Molly attachments on it. You know, you'll definitely be able to strap that onto pretty much anything. I am gonna pack it up. Now what I'm gonna do is pack this up and I'm gonna give you some info on pricing and where you can pick these up and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so quickly, let's go into the two kits here. And I didn't buckle that back up, but you, you see what it looks like. So quickly, if you look at the two kits, you have the first, the IFAC trauma kit here. Okay. And that's $99.99. Okay. Um, if you try to assemble all those supplies yourself, you're probably going to come a little close, especially with the bag included. Um, that's one of the things I found with better first aid kits. Now, there are some that are just horrible, unknown stuff that I would never use. Um, Rhino Rescue, I have been using some of their stuff for a while now. And I've used the basic stuff, the bandages, the little things here and there, gauze for when I cut my finger. I've used the stuff in the past. I have been a customer of theirs in the past, and I've been very pleased with it. So really, I have pretty much confidence in it. It seems to do very, very well. But these are $99.99, okay? The smaller kit, the outdoor IFAC kit, that's the QF002M. That's $65 right there. Now, another neat thing about this, and I showed you with the red, this, this little red thing here, is it allows somebody to just open up the top and pull out that first kit. So anything emergency life-saving, and again, I would probably add some quick clot uh, gauze to these both. Um, anything emergency life-saving can be on that middle panel and ready to go in a moment's notice. This just opens up big, 
It's fairly large in there. Um, it's a little bit of a bigger kit, probably something I would carry if I knew I was going into a dangerous situation. Uh, so definitely, they both have their purposes. They both have their places. I will give you links down below where you can check it out. Um, you can take a look at them and read more information on them. The, again, the trauma kit, the big one, the IFAC is $99.99, the smaller one's $65. So you can check them out there and uh, see what they're all about. Um, so far, I have been very pleased with their gear. I have used it in the past. Again, not for trauma, just for basic scratches, cuts, boo-boos, things like that. And I got to say, it's really good stuff. So that is the Rhino Rescue Kits for first aid. You can check out their websites below. I will have a link to both kits. And when you go there, you can look around at the other stuff too. They do have a bunch of other gear. They also have something that's very neat. Let's say you use a lot of stuff out of this kit. They have refills. So all you have to do is go there. Your kit's emptied, you know, from a trauma injury or whatever. All you have to do is go there and order the refill for it. And you'll be all set and refilled up in no time flat. So definitely check them out. Uh, I will leave links to both of them down below as well as our other links. The aren't, these aren't in my Amazon store, but if you do want to check out my Amazon store, that link is available below. We have our freeze-dried wholesaler link too. You can save 15% from anything on freeze-dried wholesalers by just checking out their video. And I have a very cool announcement and some information and a video for you coming up from them. So definitely check out freeze-dried wholesalers if you're interested in stocking up on food. Um, and the link saves you 15% right there for 25-year shelf life, freeze-dried, good, solid food. Below that is our My Patriot Supply link, preparewithiridium.com. That's preparewithiridium.com. You can save 250 bucks this month off a three-month kit. There's a bunch of other stuff there as well as a four-week kit with some savings on it as well. I believe it's $50. So do check them out and our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store. If you guys have been interested in Thrive and getting involved in it, maybe uh, becoming a delivery customer or even a consultant, check out the link down below. We've had a lot of consultants sign up with us lately, and you don't need to be, you know, obnoxious, you know, marketing Timmy, you know, running around bothering your friends. Just your own stuff will pay you back. What you order from your own self will pay you back long term. And you get a lot of good deals if you're a delivery customer or a consultant. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.